39 talks about the ostrich, the ostrich that has no wisdom. Verse number 13 of Job 39 reads, Gavest thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich, which leaveth her eggs in the earth, and warmeth them in dust, and forgetteth that the foot may crush them, or that the wild beast may break them. She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without fear, because God hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. We get a lot of teaching and instruction just from this example or parable of, a, of, a, of an ostrich. Now, this is the way an ostrich acts. They bury their eggs in the dirt and then they leave them. And they go away. They, they drop off their kids and then they walk away. And it says they forget that they could get crushed or wild beasts may come and eat them and get and devour them. And why does an ostrich do that? Because God hasn't given an ostrich wisdom. Because they're not very smart. It's not just an ostrich's egg that is vulnerable, that is susceptible to the environment. Your children, especially when they're young, are very susceptible and very vulnerable. And there are wicked people out there or people who are just don't really care that much about your children the way that you care about your children. And if you have any wisdom, you're not going to just drop your kids off somewhere and just leave them there and go away, just go off and do whatever you want to do and then just come back and pick them up. And, and I would apply this to public school, to Christian school, to daycare, just dropping off your kids and going and doing something else and then going and picking them back up again. The Bible says here about the author, she is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. People can be very nice and very friendly and very good with kids and things like that, but I'll tell you what, there is a level of care that simply is not there when they're not your own. There, there are times, especially with the little ones, when they're screaming their head off. And as a dad, I love, I love my children more than anything. I love them. But there's times where they can push you to the limits where you, you feel like you want to throw them out a window. Now, you're not going to do that because you're their dad. You're their mom, right? It's not going to happen. But what about the person that's not their kid? When you got them in the nursery, you got them in the daycare, you got them somewhere, and they start acting like that. I mean, how many times do you have to see it on the news of, of these people that set up the cameras in their house and their kids end up with some brain trauma or whatever because the babysitter or whoever can't handle it because it's not their child and they end up, you know, hurting or killing even their, the, the child because they can't take it. And they don't have the love that a parent has for the child. It happens. How much, how valuable are your children to you? I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want that ever to even be a possibility. And it's not, that, that will not be a possibility in my home. Why? Because I'll never leave my kids with someone that I don't know. And it's not just someone I don't know. I don't leave my kids with anyone other than like my parents. Because I know my parents and there's, a, there's, a, there's the love of, of children's children that exists with, with grandparents and, you know, and children like that. It's still family. But that's about it. I don't leave my kids with anybody. Why? Because I love them. And I, I don't ever want to be a statistic and I don't ever want to be like, oh man, I didn't think that would ever happen to me. That's the precaution that I take. Uh, look at Proverbs 1. And we're going to see here, and we're going to go through this real quickly, but we're going to look at Proverbs 1, Proverbs 2, Proverbs 3, Proverbs 4, and we're going to see the instruction. What is the book of Proverbs? A book of wisdom. Being taught, right? Mostly from Solomon, but it's a book that's, that's designed to give wisdom, to give instruction, to understand things, to give knowledge. The book of Proverbs. Well, look at Proverbs 1, verse number 8. What does it say? My son... Hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. Saul, or Proverbs 2, look at verse number 1. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, 
Proverbs 3, verse number 1, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Proverbs 3, 21, My son, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Proverbs 4, verse number 1, Hear ye children the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Verse number 10, Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. many. Proverbs 5, verse number 1, My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding. Do we need to keep going on? My son, my son, my son, listen to me. I'm giving you wisdom. I'm giving you instruction. You need to understand this. My son, my son, wisdom is given from father to child. That's the Bible way of doing it. With your family, with your children, dad, mom, the law of the mother, the law of the father, they need to be given to your children from you. Nothing is a substitute from your teaching. Church, school, nothing. Obviously, there's a place to come to church. There's a place to, to learn other things, but you are the primary person to instill wisdom and knowledge and instruction and in what your children need to know needs to come from you.